Hi guys, so today's video is gonna be a little bit different for me. I don't usually do videos along these lines, but I'm going to be talking about a therapy that my father and I have been researching for years, basically since I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and it's helminth therapy. Um, some of you probably have already heard of this, and some are probably like, what the heck are you talking about? So, helminths are a parasite, they are a worm, and the idea of this therapy came from basically the idea that cleanliness is actually hurting us. Um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and other autoimmune diseases started popping up around the time that we became more developed. So in the Jewish community, um, particularly in New York City, with their specialized diet, you know, kosher and being very careful with their food, and also the time when New York City um, had the sewer system built and everything was becoming cleaner, people started getting sicker. So they started to kind of put two and two together. Okay, people have parasites, um, you know, not in our, current United States, but there are people around the world with parasites, and that's how it was back in the day in the United States. And once these parasites were gotten rid of, people started popping up with these diseases. So actually, if you look at countries, third world countries where, you know, they don't have the things that we do to be able to get rid of parasites, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis are unknown. Um, and that's why people, you know, researchers started thinking, what if there is a connection between these little helminth worms and autoimmune diseases? So research studies started being put out. Um, they've done it with multiple sclerosis, allergies, asthma, IBD, and that's the study that we originally found was one done by Dr. Weinstock and Dr. Elliot. I cannot remember where it was done. Um, but I have the research article, I actually found the original one we found over 10 years ago. And it was very interesting, um, kind of remembering, like reading through it and going, oh yeah, I remember why we were so interested in this. So the idea that Dr. Elliot and Dr. Weinstock had was that these little parasites, these little worms, were immunomodulators. So when they entered the body, they basically calm the system down for their own survival. Now, when we think of parasitic infections in humans, we kind of go, ew, that's gross, we need to get rid of those now, but it's kind of used differently um, when we're using it therapeutically. So, when I went over to Africa, um, and I walked in the villages with the nurses, we actually would ask the parents, you know, has your child been um, dewormed? Which, you know, that's unheard of here. We don't deworm our kids because we don't need to. But when we think of it like that, um, when children have these parasites in countries like that, we're thinking of parasites just filling them, you know, at such a point where they're becoming anemic and having abdominal issues and nausea, vomiting, all of that. When it's used therapeutically, there's a lot less worms used and there are few to no side effects. Um, so they're controlled and the life cycle of these worms is so short, it's only a few weeks, that if there was a problem, it would be very easy to get rid of. So going back to the study done by Dr. Weinstock and Dr. Elliot, they had a number of people, not a huge study, mind you, so you know, keep that in mind. Um, they had about 29 people join the study. I think four dropped out for you know, unrelated reasons. They got pregnant or whatever. Um, so they wound up with 25 people. And the people that were in the study, um, some were on medication, some were not. Uh, but they had moderate disease and by week 12 22 people had responded to the treatment of the 25 people still in the study and 19 were in remission that's why my dad and I were like we need these we need these like I have to get them so my dad actually did get in contact I can't remember if it was Dr. Weinstock or Dr. Elliot it was one of them trying to get me desperately into this study because mercaptopurine wasn't working for me um, and I was kind of going downhill a lot faster than medications could really treat. And you guys all know I wound up getting surgery pretty quickly. 
So unfortunately, they got back to us saying that the study was closed and they were no longer accepting applicants to it. Um, and my father continued researching, you know, where, where can we get these? Where can we try these? Because the side effects in relation to them were so small. Um, I think a very minor chance of getting anemia, which I already had, so like, what's the big deal? But unfortunately, the only place that we could seem to find, like even get into a study, was Germany. And at the time, financially, we could not make the trip to Germany every few weeks. Like, I would have to take the treatment there. Now, there are a few different methods of taking uh, helminth therapy. One is just swallowing it. I think one place offered it in Gatorade, so you would drink the ova and then they would develop in you. And then the other way that they had it was actually in a skin patch. So this one's a little bit more complicated. It would penetrate your skin, get into your blood system, wind up in your lungs, you'd cough it up, swallow it, and then it would wind up in your intestines. So kind of interesting how they work, um, pretty cool. And helmet therapy is not the only type of parasite that they've tried using. This is just the most popular, it's um, the pig whipworm. And I believe that's what Dr. Elliot and Dr. Weinstock used. So after a while, my dad and I had to give up on this idea. We kind of put it on the back burner. Um, this was the time that I was doing tube feeding, gained weight, then I got sick again, then I got structures, got dilated, felt a little bit better, then I got sick again, wound up with an ostomy. It was about a year and a half after ostomy surgery. I remember because I was hospitalized at Children's Hospital for astrovirus. Um, I wound up losing a lot of water. I actually have like vlogs of me in the hospital um, Telling you about what was going on and I remember actually talking to the person I'm about to tell you about um, While I was in the hospital, <laughs> so I was having a lot of issues at the time with my colon um, my stricture even though I Don't use my colon. It was still giving me so many issues because this stricture would close up and my colon was filling with mucus and it was just super uncomfortable. I couldn't get this mucus out. Um, I was miserable. And I was like, I, I need an effective Crohn's treatment. Like I've been on Mercaptopurine for nine years. It has not done anything. I've wound up with surgery over and over and over again. Like why are we still doing this? And that was about the time, I think a few months after, that I took myself off of Mercaptopurine because I know the side effects of it and I was like, this is dumb. It's not, it's not helping me and it's probably hurting me. So I'm done. <laughs> so I actively started researching the Hellman therapy again. And now there was this new website out called autoimmunetherapies.com uh, and it was this website that sold it. Um, basically, it was this man named Jasper Lawrence. You can check out the website. His name is right at the bottom. Um, he was a man who suffered from severe allergies. I think if you go on YouTube, he actually has a whole um, story because I remember listening to it with my dad. But he suffered from severe allergies to the point where his life was just absolutely miserable. He went to, I want to say it was Africa, walked around barefoot in the latrines to try and get parasites, got them, and he got better. And I know that sounds so gross, but you come to a point when you're so sick that you are desperate. You will do anything. If you're not having quality of life, what, like, what's the risk, you know? So he did this and, you know, learned from what was going on with him. He had such great improvement with his allergies that he decided to develop them you know clean these worms um basically i don't want to say the word breed them but i guess it's kind of what he did and then he sells them mind you he is not a medical professional this is just something he does he is not in the united states because I don't think legally we can do that here um, because it's like, you know, it's a medical therapy. But he developed them, cleaned them, you know, sterilized them for human use, and then sold them. And I was like, oh my god, like we could just go buy these things. Well, not legally in the United States. <laughs> so that was number one dilemma, is that I legally could not get them here. And 
There also comes a point when you're so desperate and you're so sick that you don't care. Um, I'm just gonna put this out there, nothing happened, I never got it, I didn't do anything legal, so don't arrest me. But I decided, let me get in touch with this guy. Um, they have an application online, you just tell them about your disease and everything going on. He got in contact with me a short time later, and unfortunately from his experiences giving this um, therapy, it would not be effective on me for the sole reason that I already had an ostomy. Uh, my colon was no longer connected and that's where the worms live, is your colon. So I was trying to think of how I could possibly get this to work. Could I, you know, get dilated and then do an enema with these worms? Would that work? And it just became so complicated and I got dilated again one more time during um, I think it was during my hospitalization with astrovirus, I can't remember. And for whatever reason, that last dilation has worked and I have not been dilated in about five years. And I'm still able to clear my colon out. So it's it has improved quite a bit. So it was kind of disappointing in how the story ends because I never wound up with it. And I've always been very interested in the therapy. I think it is so cool. And I'm kind of like one of those people who's all about the more natural stuff. And I know like I shouldn't be saying that. I'm a nurse on a GI floor who like takes care of Crohn's and colitis kids all the time. Um, but I am definitely, you know, medicine's great. The natural stuff is great too. Uh, I think there is just so many cool alternative therapies out there and you know this one had research backing it up so I'll give you a website from the NIH that um, basically gives you a breakdown of the therapy explains it probably better than I can and you'll note if you read the whole article um, this is a little bit more recent than the research article I found years ago and their attitude about it is a lot like I, I guess more research has been done and it's basically saying that it's not it doesn't work for Crohn's and colitis but I don't know how they go from you know years ago with the 19 people who went into remission and to now saying it doesn't work um, I have to delve deeper into all of the research I'm not telling anybody to go out and roll in the mud to get parasites but it's something to definitely take a look at. Uh, I think it's so interesting. <laughs> but just my experience with this alternative therapy, I would still love to try it if it, you know, actually worked on somebody whose colon was disconnected. I'll link all of the articles below so you guys can take a look. I'll list the NIH's website, the original article that we found years ago, and I'll also link the website where you can buy them. I believe it's from the UK. Um, yeah, I'll put all that down below, and I hope you found this interesting. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye!